The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is another part of our gospel reading for this past Sunday, Good Shepherd Sunday, from John chapter 10, verses 2 and 6 to 10. Jesus said, The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. My dear fellow sheep and lambs in our good shepherd's flock, in our gospel reading for this past Sunday, as I mentioned, Jesus described himself as the good shepherd in contrast to the bad shepherds, the bad spiritual leaders in Israel who were not telling the people the truth, but who were leading the people astray. And what they were doing is instead of pointing people to the promises of God, pointing people to the promise of the Savior and the forgiveness of sins, instead they were pointing the people to the law and telling the people that they needed to keep those laws well enough in order to be acceptable to God. They were putting a huge burden on the people that wasn't giving them, them peace. And actually, many of those bad shepherds, they actually looked at themselves and thought that they were doing a real good job of of following those laws, and they thought that they were holier than everyone else as well. Now, the purpose of this letter, it's of this section, it's written well to those Pharisees who were the bad shepherds, to the Jews back then, and to us as well, and well, the whole purpose was to point out the sin of the Pharisees, of their pointing people in the wrong direction so that those people back then, so that we wouldn't be led astray. And also, here what Jesus was doing is, well, preaching to those Pharisees, hopefully they some of them maybe could be led to repentance through Jesus preaching. Well, in the gospel reading, the whole section, verses 1 to 10, there really are two parables, two illustrations that Jesus uses in which he describes us as being his sheep. In the first illustration, the first parable which we considered yesterday, we heard about Jesus, our good shepherd. And as our good shepherd, we want to think about his great love and care and concern that he has for us. He also wants us to realize, as he talks about himself as our good shepherd, he wants us to realize how much we need his help, how much we need his help because, well, we are like sheep who like to wander and get ourselves into a troublesome situation where we're vulnerable to the attacks of Satan, the unbelieving world, and our own sinful flesh. We need to watch out for them, but Jesus is our good shepherd. And as our good shepherd, he's always watching out for us. He never leaves us uncared for. And if there are those times when we would wander off, well, he's going to do everything he can to 
to get us and to bring us back safely into his flock, into his sheep pen. Well, unfortunately, the Pharisees heard what Jesus was saying, but they in particular didn't really understand what Jesus was saying. Our reading says, Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. But here we can notice our Good Shepherd's concern even for those bad shepherds, those bad spiritual leaders, because what Jesus could have possibly done at this point in time is just said that he was fed up with them and that he didn't want to have anything to do with them. Instead, he said, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the true sheep. And Jesus is the gate through which shepherds need to go to get to the sheep. And well, if you think about that, spiritual leaders have to go through Jesus to get at the believers. And now to have him there as someone who's watching out for us all the time, that's always a great and wonderful thing. And then Jesus is also the one, he's the gate that we need to go through in order to get into the pasture to get nourishment. So when we are moving around, when we are living our lives, He's the one through whom we have to go. So he's always watching out for us. And well, what he also wants us to think of here is all those who are truly shepherds, that's pastors, teachers, serving God. Well, what they're always going to do is they're going to be believing in Jesus and they're always going to be guiding the sheep, the believers, using the word of God using God's truth. Jesus said, all whoever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. Of course, there were faithful shepherds in Israel before Jesus' time, but in this section, what Jesus is especially talking about is those Pharisees, those Jewish leaders who were leading the people astray. And tragically, they were more concerned about their position of leadership in the land than they were about people's souls. And whether or not they knew what they were doing, that's not the point here. What they were doing is they were trying to steal sheep and lambs away from our good shepherd's flock, trying to take believers away from God's believing family. But there's some good news here. Jesus said, the sheep did not listen to them. Jesus' real disciples, they're going to want to listen to the word of God and not to what false teachers have to say. And how important it is for pastors like me to make sure that when I'm preaching to you that you're really hearing Jesus' voice, his message, and, and how important it is for you to search and study the scriptures so that you know what it is that Jesus would be saying, so that you'd know Jesus' voice and not be led astray by the bad shepherds. Jesus said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. See, Jesus, he's, it's only through Jesus and, and his atoning work as our good shepherd that we sheep are saved. Jesus is the only savior. He's the only door. He's not just one of many different ways to eternal life and, and tragically, what is the case is that we live in a world that religious pluralism seems to be the emphasis where people kind of, so many in our world say, well, religion is good. It doesn't matter what kind it is. It's just many different ways to get to the life after this life. 
But Jesus says just the opposite to that. Scripture says just the opposite. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And the Apostle Peter says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Jesus says, The thief, any bad shepherd, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. In contrast to the bad shepherds, look at Jesus. He came to give life. That's why he laid down his life for us, sacrificing his life on the cross so that our sins would be paid for us so that we could have real life. He, with his perfect life, his innocent suffering and death, he, he paid for our sins so that we could have life. And now eternal life is something that we can be sure of because of his resurrection from the dead. And through his work, we have real life. And think about what that means. It means we have the forgiveness of sins. We have freedom from our guilt we have the freedom to live as believing children of God. And, and what he does is he removes our fears and our doubts so that we can be sure of our eternal life in heaven. But he is the only way, the only gate to eternal life. Thank God that that only way has been revealed to us. He, our good shepherd, gives us perfect love and care, always watching over us, and he's also the gate to the sheep pen, the only way to heaven. He's been revealed to us so that as Jesus says, we may have life and have it to the full. Right now, with all of life's trials and troubles, we may kind of wonder about that a little bit. But as God's believing children, as sheep and lambs in our good shepherd's flock, we really right now do have life and have it to the full. We have that right now, we'll have it forever. As King David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for being our good shepherd, for always watching out for us when we would wander, when, when we're not wandering, when we're just living in this sinful world, that you're always keeping an eye out for us, trying to keep us safe and secure and protected. We thank you for being our good shepherd. We thank you also for being the gate to the sheep pen, for being that only way to heaven which has been revealed to us. Thank you for revealing yourself as that only way. Thank you for assuring us that well, you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that we have the way to the Father. Oh, we are so blessed. We, we live in a world with all kinds of problems and troubles, but with you as our good shepherd, with you as our way to heaven, well, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, that you've given us life now 
and that we will really have life to the full when you take us to heaven. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.